Why don't people have this? Why, why aren't people using it? So as you're probably aware, most people use Canon and Sony cameras when they're vlogging for three main reasons. One, good autofocus. Two, the size and weight. But mainly, they've become cool because the top YouTubers use them and people gravitate towards those because if they're good enough for them, they must be good enough for us. In the past, Panasonic were pretty much the wedding video camera because they've got a great image and great stabilization but they definitely weren't a vlogging camera. And that's largely down to, like the GH range were very large and bulky. So you didn't want to carry one of those about with you. I'm gonna move because I feel like it's too windy. And also the autofocus wasn't great on those cameras. Not for like face tracking. So because of that, people haven't really looked towards Panasonic for a vlogging camera. But now with the S5, I'm gonna tell you that you absolutely can vlog with a Panasonic camera in 2021. And maybe more of us actually should be doing. So ever since I tried the S1H, I've, I've just been raving about the image quality of that camera. It's astonishing. So my mate Russell actually set me up with Panasonic Lumix UK and they've very kindly sent me the S5 to test out, along with a selection of lenses as well. So stay tuned because I'm gonna be testing out these lenses very soon. On first glance, they're incredible. So you don't wanna miss those. Make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to get notified. I just wanna make you aware though that I'm under no obligation to say anything in particular about these cameras I'm not being paid by Panasonic so everything that I do talk about in this video and future videos will be my 100% honest feedback and thoughts about these cameras so I want to be testing the main things that would make the perfect vlogging camera things like autofocus sound quality ease of use is the 20 to 60 kit lens wide enough for vlogging and the overall image quality I don't think I'm even allowed on here. <laughs> so I guess the first thing to talk about, and it's the main thing really, the autofocus. Now I had to play around a little bit to get this right, but I've actually found some settings that work best and it's absolutely fine, it's perfect. It works just as well as the Canon and Sony does. This is an autofocus test using the S5. I've actually found that when you change the setting to Crikey me, I've never seen so many ladybirds. When you change the setting to locked on, more towards the locked on side, that's what you want for this sort of thing. So once it's found your face, once it's found your subject, it locks on better. So that's what I recommend if you're doing stuff like this. It's good that you can go in and control it to set it however you want. Super happy about that. Let me just check if I can go from my face to this bush, for example. Amazing. I'm impressed with that. I'm happy. So I'm on autofocus continuous mode and then I'm on the human detect mode so it'll pick up where your eyes are. But then I've adjusted the sensitivity slightly. So what I've done is I've turned it all the way to locked on mode. So if you want the best autofocus for vlogging on the S5, they're the settings that I recommend. And it works a treat. That was the main thing for me. If this was as good as the Canon or Sony for autofocus, that would make me want to use this camera even more. So when I found out the kit lens was 20 mil to 60 mil, I thought, oh, that's not very, that's probably not wide enough. But the fact that this is a full frame camera at 20 mil, it's actually fine. I'm very surprised actually. You know, when you compare it to a 15 mil, it's not as wide, but absolutely does the job. So this is me holding the camera just by the lens. But if you want a little bit of extra reach and a little bit more in the frame, you could get one of the Joby Gorilla Pods and that just gives you a little bit extra reach makes it a little bit wider so you can fit a bit more in. To be fair, I actually prefer 20mm because it makes my face look less alien-like and you can definitely get more than one person in the frame. So if you are wondering if this lens is wide enough for vlogging, yes it is, in my personal opinion. You might want a super wide angle view, in which case you might just have to get a different lens for it. It's also a weather sealed lens, so out in all sorts of different conditions, hot weather, cold weather, rain, dusty, you're covered. So this is an audio test for the S5, currently using the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus microphone, and this is what it sounds like. If you want some audio tips, I've got uh, plenty of videos on those, so check them out if you need to. I'm also using my audio presets as well to make it sound nice and crisp and clear and get rid of some of that wind noise. 
as much as possible anyway because you can't always get rid of it completely without changing the sound of your voice totally. So every camera has a native or base ISO and that basically means that your camera has an optimum ISO setting that will give you less noise. So right now I'm actually underexposed because I'm in a shaded area and if I were to change the ISO now you'll see that it will add more grain into the image so the shadows will be quite grainy and noisy. And what's good about this camera is it has two. It's a dual native ISO camera. It means that when it reaches 4000, it cleans up again. So perfect for situations like this. Right, so this is ISO 640, which is the base native ISO. Gradually go up, so that's 800, 1000, 1250, 1600, 2500, 3200, and then 4,000. And as you can see, the difference between 3,200 and 4,000 is huge. There's so much less noise at 4,000 than there is at 3,200. But this feature is perfect because when you're outside vlogging, you're often in a bunch of different scenarios. For example, one minute you'll be in the sun, next minute you'll be in the shade like this. So having that extra range without having a load of noise is so handy. For a camera of this price, it's unheard of really, you haven't got dual gain ISO on the R6, but if you want it in the Sony, you're paying almost double, and we'll get to that in a bit. So just testing out the stabilization on the S5. I've got the Joby Gorilla Pod, I'm holding it about arm's length. I'm just walking normally, I'm not trying to be smooth or anything like that. And I'm at 20 mil, so this is what it looks like. Image stabilization test with the R6. I'm at 20 mil. All the settings are the same, f3.5, just so that it's a direct comparison and uh, see what the difference is. Stabilisation, absolutely fine. It's a lot more natural than the Canon R6 or the R5. You haven't got that strange wobble in the corners, which is, which is a lot better, really. Now, because of the sensor in the S5, you actually get more detail in your shots and the dynamic range is fantastic. It's so good. And that's really handy when you're out vlogging because if you're outside, for example, weather conditions are always changing or the way you're facing often changes. And if you don't have the time to correct your exposure every shot, then it's good to know that that dynamic range will save you here and there. Don't get into the habit of not checking your exposure, obviously, but having that extra dynamic range does help. Vlog is great. The S5 does have other picture profiles, but I wouldn't recommend them to be honest. And if you're spending this much on a camera with a log profile on it, you wouldn't really be using those anyway. So I definitely recommend sticking to Vlog. <sighs> I tell you what, I bought a coat the other day because the weather was starting to drop cold. As soon as I did that, sun's out, absolutely boiling. Coat's in the bag. Honestly, sweating, beading. So the one thing that ties all of this together is the price. So you can actually get this camera body and the lens for under £2,000. And with the features on it and the quality of the image, there's nothing else like it in that price range. The only thing that comes close is the Sony a7C, but that's a similar price just for the body. Then you're going to have to buy a lens for it as well. So this really is the best value for money vlogging camera that there is. Not only that, you can use this as a professional camera because it's got vlog, because of the dynamic range and everything else really. Against the R6 you're looking at spending an extra £500, then a lens on top of that. So this is at least £1,000 more affordable. The Sony a7S 3 for the body only, is nearly £4,000. So it's nearly double this just for the body. I don't see why more people aren't using this. And I truly believe the reason is because, like I said earlier, of its history. But now that they've come out with the S5, that's changed. The only thing I think stopping people now from buying this camera is the fact that more YouTubers aren't using them and aren't promoting them. But if they did and they realized how good it was, and the price, then I think more people are going to be using this in the future for vlogging. But it's going to take, this is it. This is my new vlogging camera. It's smaller and lighter than the R6, better image, better stabilization, perfect autofocus, more affordable. What more could you want, really? 
If you want to see just how good these cameras are, go and check out Russell's channel because honestly he makes all his videos look like a proper film. So definitely go and check him out. So what I want to say is don't just go for the camera that everybody's telling you to get or because everybody else is using that camera. Try a bunch of them. Try them all and see which one you prefer. Loads of videos coming up on the S5. Loads of tests that I've got to do that I want to show you because it's incredible. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more of that. Press the bell to get notified. Have a great week. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.